So I went to Disney, I sampled and reviewed a bunch of drinks there. Some of them were great, some were terrible. I wanted to see if I could make an improved version at home or even just figure out how to make it at home. So let's do that today on how to drink. Let's start off with that LeFou's Brew. That was the first one I reviewed in the reviewing episode and it wasn't good. Garbage. But there was something I thought was kind of cool about the passion fruit foam. And I thought, you know, this drink's got a little bit of notoriety, whether it's infamy or fame. Uh, of course, it was Disney's like very cheap attempt to come out with something that would compete with Universal's Butterbeer. Wouldn't it be neat to do an elevated version of LeFou's Brew using the basic idea there, right? Like LeFou's Brew is basically passion fruit foam and apple juice, but I think we can do better than that. So it starts though with making passion fruit foam. I'm gonna use my uh, whipper. This is an ISI whipper. We'll put a link in the pinned comment and up here in the corner. You can pick one of these up on Amazon. If you do, please use my affiliate link. I'm gonna make a foam of my favorite passion fruit liqueur, which is Chinola. When you need to add passion fruit to a drink, and frankly, you should need that more often than maybe you do. This is uh, the one I really like to use. And so to do this, all I'm gonna do is add a goodly amount of my liqueur here. And honestly, I'm probably just gonna kill the bottle. And then the other part of this equation is this stuff. This is a product from Modernist Pantry. Put a link again for this one, pick it up. This is uh, their Foam Magic. Foam Magic is a proprietary blend of maltodextrin, methylcellulose, and xanthan gum, which are fancy names for, if I'm not mistaken, fairly, innocuous ingredients, right? And you can either make like what they call lacy foams or a loose foam just by running some bubbles through it, uh, air bubbles, or by kind of shaking it up really good, or you can make a dense, creamy foam using a whipper. I've measured this for spirits a couple times. It's really not a lot. It's very, very little to make this work. I think for most of your infusions, a bar spoon is going to be the right amount. I am going to throw just a touch of simple syrup in here. Just a little extra sugar is going to help this foam do what I want it to do. And now you just put the lid on, give that a good shake. We're just gonna try and get that a little bit dissolved in there. And now we're gonna pressurize it with nitrous. The reason this does a good job, nitrous, of making a really thick foam in a way that shaking or uh, aerating doesn't is because nitrous has really tiny bubbles. We're gonna shake again. And in a whipper of this size, whoops, we're gonna need two cartridges. Give that a good shake. And now I'm gonna let that sit while I make the drink. So I want three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Get that in there. I want a quarter ounce of Benedictine, two ounces of Apple Jack. I'm gonna do a uh, half an ounce of simple syrup and I'm gonna shake that up. Drain that into your glass. And now gently with this squeeze, and I do have the wrong tip on here, so hopefully this isn't a disaster. <laughs> Stable foam, except that mine went right over the top for some reason. And there we have our LeFou's Reserve. Let's see how it came out. Oh my God, there's no comparison. This is so much good. This is so much good. And language falls apart in my mouth. This is very good. Oh, LeFou, you've outdone yourself. I got a much lacier foam out of that. Maybe I should have measured things. Man, that, <laughs> I, this is really nice. I like this a lot. So let me run through the actual tasting notes. That bittersweet passion fruit. I love that. And that yields a floral note. And that first sip is a lot of passion fruit because the foam is big and thick on top of this drink. Oh, with like cognac-y kind of um, those raisiny notes that I always find in cognac is in there now at the end. And then the drink is this mellowed fresh apple thing, man. It's, it's like peeling an apple and shoving it in your nose and sniffing it not like biting into an apple, which is different because that would be apple juice. This is more like essence of apples. It is vibrant, it's awake, it's lovely. It's not overly sweet like LaFou's Brew and it's got a little something for daddy in there. It's full of alcohol. It's got a little, uh, it's got some kick to it. You know, LaFou, he, he's a tiny fella, you know? He, he doesn't have much of a, a tolerance for alcohol. He can't really drink a lot, that LaFou. Very easy to throw his BAC way into atmospheric levels, you know, because he doesn't have a lot of blood in his tiny body. Yeah, man, this is phenomenal. Make this drink. 
you folks on the internet, you sent me to Nomad Lounge at Animal Kingdom and I was blown away. I can't believe I didn't know this place existed. The drinks were almost universally phenomenal in there. I strongly recommend it if you're looking to have a decent drink and also great food. I was particularly impressed by the Tempting Tigress, which is their version of an old fashioned. That's a cool drink. It's the wrong kind of drink to have in the middle of a theme park that you're walking around in on a hot day. I can't finish this drink, but I like this drink a lot. The only thing is that Tempting Tigress, like all, almost all the drinks, or maybe even all the drinks that I, I had there, was made on poor ice, like bleh, ice machine ice, maybe even like half moon style freezer ice from your own kitchen. You don't need perfect ice, but you don't want bad ice. That ice was bad, but the drinks were good. And if you're wondering what makes for bad ice, well, I think it couldn't be clear at all. I just explained to you. You don't want it to be sloopy, droopy, whoopy wop ice. That's all. Just not that. So we're going to start now with a half an ounce of lime juice. This drink is really interesting to me because it is the Nomad Lounge's answer to an old fashioned. It does fall into that flavor profile, at least as I remember it. I need a bar spoon of tamarind syrup. Here it is. I made this just before I shot. Buy some tamarinds, chop them up, make a two to one simple syrup, put the tamarinds in there, blah, 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 get the color out, strain them, and there you go. Uh, this was 130 milliliters of water to 260 grams of sugar and 30 grams or thereabouts of tamarind. I just want a bar spoon or two. I'm going to go with two actually because I have a feeling I'm going to need that to really taste it. I want one ounce of allspice dram, specifically St. Elizabeth allspice dram. I think you'll be hard pressed to find another allspice dram. I don't even know of them. So one ounce and this is one of my favorite ingredients. It is a kind of a liquid magic. More drinks should call for this. It is, it may not surprise you to find out that it's not too far off from the flavor profile of Angostura bitters. Now I want two ounces of bourbon. I'm gonna go with the Garrison Brothers. Uh, it's a weeder. Um, we bought this in our, you know, low cost Pappy Beaters episode. It's fine bourbon. I have nothing against this bourbon at all. It's, it's good stuff. It's a, it's a weeder, um, good bourbon. So it's interesting, right? This drink is meant to be their answer to an old fashioned and yet, once we throw that lime juice in there, it's kind of, it's a sour, but I don't know why. I do s distinctly remember this drink feeling and tasting like an old fashioned as opposed to a sour. I'm gonna find out if my memory is correct or not. Maybe it's the allspice dram. It wouldn't surprise me to find out that that does so seriously moderate some of those other flavors that are we're adding in there with the lime that, uh, that it does kind of pull it right back into that old fashioned territory, which is kind of a neat trick. Put some ice in our shaker. We're gonna shake this up. Get yourself a glass. That was really fun, but not helpful. Put it down in there. And uh, this glass might be a little small for this drink, so strain however much of the drink will fit into the glass. Oh, you know what, more than I thought. Uh, there we have what I hope is a tempting tigress. Fascinating drink. Yeah, no, oh, that's cool. Mm. <laughs> Oh my God, it is a riot of flavors. I can't believe, yeah, man, better ice helped this drink. I know, people think I'm crazy. I just got into a kind of a spat with a commenter about this, about ice ma mattering or not. It matters, it really matters here. Huge upgrade. Holy shit, that's good. It comes in with this earthy, earthy flavor, no lime there at all. As a matter of fact, I don't really think that the lime comes through very loud at all. It's just there balancing it earthy allspice flavor. But I don't think it's just the allspice. I think a lot of that is the tamarind syrup melding with the allspice. Fascinating, really fascinating. I sound like such an ass when I say that, I'm sorry. And then, at least with this bourbon, you get this bright and malty, the weeder note. I mean, you get this bourbony note that is, it's in a higher register. It's not that deep, dark bourbon which may or may not be the right choice for this drink, the quote unquote right. I, I cannot remember uh, which way that other one slices, the, the Russell Reserve. It might be a more traditional bourbon. It certainly is a 10 year bourbon too, which would have a fair bit of oak on it, but this is excellent. Whatever I'm doing here is great. And honestly, I think in a lot of these drinks, right? Like your old fashions, I'm gonna go out on a limb here. Bourbons in drinks are interchangeable. You just get a different experience with all of them. It doesn't ruin the drink at all. There's no way to go too far wrong. I think that you could use the wrong gin 
I don't think you could really use the wrong vodka. I don't think you can use the wrong bourbon. Um, I think you can go wrong with rum. I know you can. You can go wrong with a lot of stuff. In a lot of cases, you're just gonna get a different drink. This is just maybe different, but boy, is it cool. It's got that earthy opening that yields the wheater bourbon, brighter, grainy notes, but then it closes out on this really floral kind of thing. That's a cool drink, man. Yeah, it never really presents like a sour. It does taste way more like an old fashioned than any kind of a sour you're gonna have. And that's a neat trick. I am very impressed by that. Make this drink. Oh, there it is. Really, really late arriving. When you think this drink is done, the allspice shows up. You have to slowly drink this drink because if you sip too quick, you're gonna reset that flavor profile and you're never gonna get to those tail notes. The evolution is a mile long on this drink. It stays with you so long. What a freaking cool drink, man. At the Polynesian Village Resort, which is a, an opening day hotel that is sort of a grail item for me to stay at. I have yet to uh, justify the outrageous expense of staying at the Polynesian. But they do serve a drink there called the Lapu Lapu, which I understand has been on the menu since the day that they opened back in 1971. Uh, some people make a big deal about it. You know, it's been there forever. It's got a history. It's got some pedigree. It's got these roots down there. There's a new world. It's not a very impressive drink. It tastes like a sugary, sweet fruit punch from 1971. And the recipe that they use at the Polynesian is two parts Myers dark rum, two parts pineapple juice, three parts orange juice, one part sweet and sour mix, uh, and you top it with one part 151 proof Bacardi rum, which they're probably not using Bacardi anymore because I don't think you can even get that. Standard Lapu Lapu served at the Polynesian does call for a sweet and sour, uh, I say ditch it. I think we could take this Polynesian village resort and improve it to the staple status that it really deserves. So we're gonna start by putting together one ounce of lime juice. I want one ounce of orange juice. We need an ounce and a half of pineapple juice. I want an ounce and a half of rum. I'm gonna use Plantation Five Year. This is a really good all-purpose rum, good stuff. I want an ounce of overproof rum. I wanna use a Demerara overproof, and the answer there for me is Lemon Heart 151. Hamilton makes a overproof rum as well. I use it a lot on the show. I felt like mixing it up. This is good stuff. If you can get it, buy it. I need three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup for this drink. Keep in mind, we're working on a pretty accessible, upgraded version of a theme park drink. So there's nothing wrong with this being a little sweet. I'm gonna throw a couple dashes of bitters in this. Angostura, fine, love Angostura. If you can get them, if you wanna get them, Bitterman's, Elemakule, Tiki Bitters, I freaking love these. Let's shake this drink up. Drain this into my glass. I'm gonna do a little partial open pour to get some ice in there. There we go. I'm gonna grab a drink umbrella. And there we have a Lapu Lapu, an upgraded Lapu Lapu, the how to drink Lapu Lapu. Let's see how it is. Ah, that's good. That is good. We've taken the Lapu Lapu We've toned down the sweetness on it. We have thrown some evolution into it. We've balanced it. It has a wonderful, what is that flavor profile? Not floral, fruit. I mean, it goes to a, a honestly stone fruit. It kind of feels like cherries. There's like a cherry vibe in here. And that's definitely coming from the collaboration of our Elamakule Tiki Bitters, the fruit that's in there and the sweetness. It gets to a place that kind of reminds me of cherries. I'm really enjoying that. My garnish is insane. It's way, it's it's cantilevered. It's dangling on the edge here. It's a balanced drink, much more like a Mai Tai than the Lapu Lapu that they serve over at the Polynesian Village Resort. It is balanced blend of spirits, fruits, citrus, sweet, and sour that is approachable. It is easy to drink this drink, but which is not cloyingly sweet, right? This is a good drink. In general, I think it's a good drink for a theme park. If you were looking around for the best drinks in Walt Disney World, there's going to be a lot of advice and forum posts and blog posts and reviews for uh, Cava Tequila at the Mexican Pavilion in Epcot. I specifically saw people speaking very highly of the praises of the Avocado Margarita, so I had high hopes. Sadly, that drink really wasn't for me. I don't know. 
It's not my thing, but it's okay. I want to make a drink that's a little more recognizable as a margarita, because to me, the only thing that really made that drink a margarita was that it at some point involved tequila and it came in a glass that was like a margarita glass. I still want this thing to taste like and of avocado as much as possible. So it's gonna, we're gonna have to walk a line here. I've been working on this recipe for a while. I figured I would start by trying to infuse tequila with avocado rather than the way that Disney does it, which I think is just by blending avocado into the drink. I tried to fat wash it, which was by taking tequila, a measure of avocados, uh, and I blended the heck out of it. And then I let it sit for like an hour and a half or two hours. And then I put it in the freezer to try and freeze the fat out and pour it off and it didn't work. First off, all of your avocado just turns black and oxidizes really grossly. It was extremely unappetizing. It sort of tasted like avocado. I could not get those avocado fats out by freezing and I couldn't get them out even with a separatory funnel. They just sat there suspended like a awful brown pulpy cloud. That technique doesn't work. So I tried rapid infusion, partly because faster is gonna be better. The quicker we do this, the less time it has to oxidize. And partially because I thought nitrous oxide would also inhibit oxidation because I'm very good at confusing nitrous oxide and nitrogen. So I decided to check my notes and found that nitrous oxide is apparently a supercharged oxidizer. And yet the tequila that came out of that process was bright neon green and tasted perfectly infused. So I was confused. So I did more reading. And I found a paper that said that nitrous oxide was actually super good at preventing food oxidization. And it only is a super oxidizer when it's super hot. And this worked, so who cares? Yes, there'll be a little bit of pulp in this, but there's gonna be a hell of a lot less pulp than there was in the thing that they serve at Cava Tequila. Let's uh, try the Casamigos. We're gonna do some rapid infusion. We're gonna use an ISI whipper. I'm gonna, whoa! I'm gonna take one avocado and I'm gonna split this guy in half. Take these chunks of avocado and kind of just drop them in there. How much tequila are we gonna throw in there? I'm probably gonna do either four or six ounces. I'm not gonna use all that when I make the drink, but I just want there to be enough volume in there to really, to work, you know? We can't have a splash sitting on the bottom. We need surface area contact with our tequila. Put our lid back on, screw it down tight. Okay, got some pressure in there, shake it up. And now we're gonna do the next cartridge. And that's it, we're gonna let that sit for a little while. Now, I have two rimming options. Always fun to say that. This one is just some uh, coarse kosher salt and some chili powder that I put together. A little spicy, a little salty, a lot of salty, a lot of spicy. This is uh, sal de gusano agave worm salt. This is a salt that is, it's, it's a spice, I should say, that is salt and dried and seasoned agave worms ground up together. Let's see if this is the right stuff to go with. I don't think it will be that. Well, it's so smoky. Ooh. Ooh -hoo. So we're gonna do half and half. Make a little line ledge, and I'm going to paint the outside of my glass, just the outside, with lime juice, spicy salt. And now over here, we'll do our gusano. So smoky. Why am I doing it that way? I haven't decided which one's good yet, and I am kind of workshopping this drink right now. I think we're still in beta testing on what I was working on, so let's go from there. We're gonna start with one ounce of lime juice. Let's do one ounce of citron, or Grand Marnier, or dry curacao. Take your pick. I wanna do uh, a dash or two of, this is a 20% uh, saline solution. So now we wanna do our tequila. This is gonna be a really loud process and if you're married, you're gonna get in trouble when you do it. Okay, so I wanna add two ounces of our infused tequila to this. Okay, there's our avocado. We're gonna shake it up with some ice. Oh shit. What? Oh shit! I just found out that somehow or another, my beautiful freezer of beautiful ice got unplugged. What? I'm gonna go get some terrible ice from my refrigerator and we're gonna make it with that because tough titties. All right, uh, freezer ice, whatever. <laughs> Shake this up. Let's strain that. All right, let's see here, the chili rim. Mm-hmm. I'm very happy with that. Fresh avocado notes. Very approachable drink. 
but not overly sweet at all. I honestly, I think I might even go like drier. I think I might have gone Cointreau on this one. Man, I'm very happy with that. Hmm, let's see how it is with the smoky. No, no, that competes with it. The worm salt is a much more um, acrid, like mesquite kind of flavor. The chipotle and salt is much better here. It's a delight. Fresh, buttery, um, salty, spicy, smoky. Avocado. Avocado tastes like avocado. It tastes like avocado. It's great. All right. I said I was workshopping it. I, I want to do it again. Let's, um, I'm going to make this drink a second time now with a different infusion here. Uh, just to see if it's any better or any different, really, right? Let's see if we can make this stuff even more intensely uh, infused. That's what we're looking for. Here we go. One ounce of lime juice, ounce of this stuff, two ounces of our infused. There you go. Look at that color. Oh my God. Uh, let's shake this up. Much nicer color on that. Oh, yeah. That's gorgeous. Let's see how this comes out. Do that. That's so good. Fresh, bright, smoky, salty, limey, tart, right? The balance. This buttery avocado stuff that's going on in there. Fantastic color. Perfect. Oh, I love it. I'm saving that for later. All right, so there was another drink I had down there at Olivia's at the old Key West Resort that I've never seen or heard of anything. It was a crazy drink. It was a Thai basil fizz. Sounded like a cool idea for a drink. That's a goddamn weird drink because it's like ginger and peanut. It's a combination of sweet, hot ginger, and peanut butter. Let's see if we can come up with a decent Thai basil fizz right now. This is a spicy peanut orjat uh, that I'm going to call Thai orjat. It's peanut, sugar, and a couple different kinds of peppers, and, uh, and that's that. And this is, I'm calling it Thai basil simple. It's actually, because Thai basil is not really available right now, a mix of regular basil and mint um, in a simple. I think between the two, uh, we're gonna be able to come up with an appropriately Thai fizz. So this is some stuff called Mekong. It's the spirit of Thailand, imported and distilled and blended and bottled by uh, Bang Yakan Distillery, product of Thailand. A neutral spirits distilled from 95% cane and 5% rice with herbs and spices and caramel added. Okay, well, I'm gonna start by doing like literally a 50-50 mix of these two syrups, right? Like this is where all of the flavor in this drink is really coming from. Half an ounce of our peanut or Thai or Jat, a uh, half an ounce of the uh, basil syrup. So I've got a 50-50 ratio of the two. I mean, I'm getting, it tastes like Thai food. Okay, I think the rest is gonna be very easy. We might build this large and then serve it small just so that I've got something to work with here. So let's do another half an ounce of each, just so I've got something to work with, because I don't know what the ratio between this and our spirits is gonna be. Once you get those ratios, you can work it back to a single serving, right? You can figure out, well, this is what the drink actually is. One half an ounce of lime juice, and we'll see how that ratio works out. That's exactly what I want. That's exactly it. So what is that? That's um, eight parts sweet to one part sour, right? A quarter to two ounces, right and then you want to start adding booze to it. So let's start with one ounce of this Mekong. Let's get that other ounce in there. I'm not really tasting it yet, which means I can fit more in there. And if we can get two ounces into this, I'm pretty happy with that. A third ounce would be better, actually. Put one more ounce in. I wanna make this a fizz, and we're gonna do it by direct carbonation. Strain it directly into the carbonation bottle. And so we fill that up with some pressure, a little agitation. We don't have to strain it now, we just release the gas. Look at that. Now, if I could get it, a little sprig of Thai basil would be great. Let's try the uh, how to drink version of the Thai basil fizz. 
Now nah, you're talking. That is awesome. That is a riot of flavors. Wow. And the peanuts and the peppers. Just, ooh, it's alive. That is a, that's a Thai basil fizz. I'm thrilled with the way this came out. Oh my God. Maybe you could make it sweeter. Maybe. I, it's not necessary. But you know what? No, you don't want it sweeter. If you want it sweeter, you just don't like the peppers. That's really what it is. I am blown away by how nice this is, except for the color. It could definitely be more attractive. It does look sort of like peanut sauce, though, so <laughs> what, what to be expected. Mm. Even on the nose, you get like this bright pepper smell. Balanced on the sweetness, really sets your throat on fire with hot oils from the peppers, but not overpowering. I'm not a hot and spicy guy. I'm really not. This is on the money, man. Tastes like Thai food made into a cocktail. I'm very happy about this. Oh, did it in one. I did spend a couple days preparing ingredients, but I mean, maybe more lime. Maybe, I'm just trying to think about like, you know, I feel like I didn't workshop it. I made it and it came out good. No, because then it overpowers. Now it tastes like a drink that's got lime in it. It's very nice, it's very refreshing, but as a thing that tastes like Thai food, it does it less so now. Yeah, don't fuck with it. it we just, it's a hole in one. Oh, it, well, I nailed it, I don't know. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> so today on How to Drink, uh, I went to Disney World and I found some drinks that I really liked and I made them at home and I improved them at home. This was a lot of fun. It was cool to go somewhere and, and find these drinks and be kind of impressed by them, but think that they, weren't living up to their full potential. Like I thought that the idea of a Thai basil fizz was really good, but the execution wasn't right. Uh, same with the avocado margarita. The other three drinks in this episode, I shot them separately when I thought that the whole Disney thing was gonna be one episode. This is a little extra to make this episode stand on its own. What? I can say that I'll be back at Disney in the not too distant future. So hit me up with your ideas for what you would do with more Disney content uh, because I'll be there. Uh, we are those people who go frequently. If you want to hit me up directly and hang out in my Discord, that is a feature of my Patreon. You will find a link for that down here in the corner, or up here in the corner, or down here in the pinned comment. Check it out. Uh, and if you do, I'll see you over there. And otherwise, I will see you in the next episode of How to Drink, right here on How to Drink. Like and subscribe. Do the things that we all wish you would do. Ow!